Welcome back to Inside City Hall. The CEO of our city's housing authority was on the hot seat today testifying before the city council about the agency's finances. This comes as the agency known as NYCHA is rolling out a new initiative aimed at addressing a long backlog of repairs and maintenance needs and is also dealing with increased federal scrutiny. Joining me now is NYCHA's chair and CEO Shola Olatoye. Thank you for being here. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, let's just start with um, the progress on that big huge structural deficit. Mm -hmm. I mean the the big shocker out of your testimony to me today was that uh, each unit um, falls further behind to the tune of $120 per year, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot, except there's 178,000 right. of these units. That's right. So, so we're, you're always kind of running from behind. Right. right. So look, I think the financial challenges of the Housing Authority have been something that this administration has, has taken on head on. And part of, our, part of our plan, Next Generation NYCHA, has been to address the long-standing recurring annual operating deficits. And we do this so that we can actually improve what's happening in people's homes. Mm -hmm. So what we've done, what this mayor has done, is we've sought relief from payments to the city that you know we had, had, had been doing for more than 40 years, whether that was the pilot or a payment in lieu of taxes or payment for policing services. Uh, and, and now the mayor has also given us some money for capital for to help replace some roofs. So there have been very specific strategies that we have deployed over the course of the last two years, which in short have made things less worse. Now as we go forward, the challenge is how do we address our $61 million projected deficit for 2016? And we have some very specific plans to do that, increasing rent, uh, also seeking some, seeing some additional revenues from, from our development activities. None of these things are easy, and none of these things come without, without a fair amount of, of debate. Uh, but they require the kind of attention and diligence in order to address these, these long-term uh, structural issues. Well, th th that's what I was going to ask you, is that, you know, um, in, if individually, $120, it, it's a lot if you don't have it, but it's not an impossible sum. You're talking about $10 a month, right? right? right. Is it possible to s simply increase the rent by $10 a month well, to the extent that it could sort of help close that particular part of the problem? Well, look, I think, in, in fact, we we actually have increased our rent collection over the last, um, from 2014 to 2000. 15 by about 2%, uh, which actually has resulted in a gross total increase in rent. Um, but uh, one thing that I noted in my in my testimony, we have some uncontrollable expenses like uh, health care and fringe. So even though our headcount or the number of people who with whom who we employ has gone down mm -hmm. from its high of about 16,000 to now about 11,200, our personnel and healthcare costs have increased um, by almost half, by about 50%. So we have uh, now this, the, we have a uh, sort of an interesting X that's happening, which is our, our headcount going down and our cost, costs going up. So we have tried to, we are working on increasing those amounts, those pots of revenue that are within our control, like rent, like other forms of, of revenue from our development, from our commercial leasing, from parking. Um, and those things are going to evolve. Look, mm -hmm. Next Gen NYCHA is a living plan. Uh, you make a set of uh, financial projections based on data that you have, and you adjust them as you go. I think one thing that this administration has been very focused on is being more transparent about our finances and talking about the reality is if we hadn't done the last the, the things that we've done over the last two years, our budget would be about a hundred and sixty million dollar deficit for two thousand and sixteen. So we are making slow but po positive progress towards a positive direction. When, when you talk about um, fringe benefits soaring out of control, is that because of um, uh, collective bargaining agreements that your predecessors made? Is it out of whack? Is it, out, is it uh, sort of off the pattern? Or is this just one more expense that it's hard to pay for? I think it's a, it's a little bit of both. I mean, I think part of this is we are we have a, a, an aging population. People are working and living longer, um, but we also have a pattern um, a pattern agreement that we are in agreement with and that we are uh, meeting our obligations to. So this this is this is just to say is those are expenses that we can't control. Mm -hmm. And so what we can control, we need to be even more in control over, like our like revenue, like our ability to cut expenses. So what, you know, in looking at our staff, um, our central office staff, and our ability to reduce 
and or a trit or essentially not backfill positions um, so that we can really push all available resources to the front line of the organization. Um, you have uh, been engaged in a, a controversy with the union, with Local 237, about what you call flex ops, mm -hmm. meaning that for what I gather something like 40 years, uh, the work day for caretakers and maintenance workers just stopped at 4.30, period. Uh, and then on the weekends and other times, stuff just didn't get done. So you've been trying to sort of work with that. The, and, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. sort of uh, change some of the shifts around. They say that that's a violation of your contract, of your collective bargaining agreement. So that's simply not correct. And uh, the, the contract is a public document and we encourage people to look at it. But more importantly, we start from a place of how do we improve customer service to our residents? The services that I receive, that you receive at your home should be no different from uh, what our what NYCHA residents should expect. They should expect their floors to be mopped when they leave for work and their trash to be picked up. So we start from a place of how do we improve what's happening on the ground today uh, so that public housing can be around for another generation. Look, I think what we have done with our colleagues at 237 is engage in a long process, almost eight and a half months now, of talking about all manner of things. And, um, and, and we got to a place where we needed to uh, agree to disagree and move on. And, and that, it, whatever, it will be settled uh, in, in, in front of a judge. But while we move forward, uh, this is really about improving what's happening in people's apartments, getting into apartments that we normally can't get to because of the folks who work um, at NYCHA, which is about 40%. Um, people don't have the flexibility to uh, take time off of work. That's lost wages and mm -hmm. lost rent. So my, my, our, my focus, our focus is how do we safely in deploy our existing employees over a longer period of time so that our residents can have a cleaner uh, a cleaner uh, place to live. One of the things that came out during the hearings today is that um, Preet Bharara, the U.S. attorney, who we um, have yeah. heard was uh, asking questions of NYCHA about possible lead content mm -hmm. in the water, in the mm -hmm. pipes, or in the environment generally. Um, you said today in, in, in testimony that it's actually a, a fairly broad-ranging set of inquiries now. Have we gone beyond lead at this point? So it, that's actually where it started from, Errol, which mm -hmm. was this was this uh, this inquiry and really was, is a document information request and, and, and gathering process was really about all, all levels of, of, of operational components uh, within the Housing Authority and, and, and one of which was um, the safety uh, around sort of lead and lead abatement issues. Look, we take this incredibly seriously. We are cooperating fully. I have two lawyers who are doing nothing but responding to our colleagues at DOJ. And we've turned over more than 440 million records to, oh our, uh, to, our, to our colleagues. So mm -hmm. this is not something that we take lightly. We, have zero, we are moving forward. Uh, while, that is, while that is moving forward, we also have to move forward in the implementation of next gen and trying to improve the lives of our residents. So, so um, that, that set of inquiries is going on. As far as you know, though, I mean, internally, um, is there a lead problem anywhere in NYCHA? So, first of all, I think it's really important to say that New York City has actually done incredibly well in decreasing the amount of, uh, of children who are exposed to, to lead. So cut the risk by something like 69%. So we take, again, I think the health and safety of our residents and our employees very, very seriously. It's literally baked into the DNA of next gen. I think it's also important to note that you know, the Department of Health tests something like 1.2 million children over the last five years. And within that group, about 6,800 kids actually tested positive for mm -hmm. lead. 202 of those children lived within NYCHA and then 18 of those homes actually ended up testing with, with elevated levels. We immediately went in, remediated, and those homes are lead free. So I, lead free. So I think you know, the, the bottom line here is we take this very seriously given the national context uh, and that statistically the numbers are very low. We are in compliance with, with local law 11. Again, I'm talking about lead paint. Mm -hmm. and, and we remain very focused on ensuring that um, our home, our, our apartments are, are safe and when there are issues, immediately abating them. Does the, does the, um, uh, the authority have um, good enough records that you can tell what kind of paint was put in this stairwell, that stairwell in every apartment? I, yes, we do, actually. And, 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 you know, look, I think given a, a city like New York that's as old as it is, the presumption is that buildings built before 1960 had some presence of lead. 
um, and we actually have uh, inspected those apartments and, and know what, what the issues may be and, 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 and done the testing there as well. Then buildings built after that, we um, did a very aggressive testing and sampling and, and came back with very low levels of lead. Um, and now, um, as when apartments are being vacated, um, we go in there and we do the testing and ensure that we're doing the annual notification when, with, to families uh, with uh, children under the age of six, which is really important that to, to note that you know that's the population sure. that we're most concerned about. Um, we care about all of the health of our of our residents, but it's really children under six that are susceptible for this. So look, I think it's really important that we provide this information, and people understand that from a lead paint perspective, um, we are uh, con in compliance with with the law, and from a lead from potential you know lead in the water, which has not been substantiated. Um, we actually did a, out of an abundance of caution, did a testing of about 175 apartments. We have 178,000, and only one apartment came back with uh, potential uh, elevated uh, lead levels, and that, and, and that was after the second draw. So again, we're, we're working very closely with our colleagues at the Department of Health, the Department of Environmental Protection to make sure that our protocols are in line and that um, that information, the results of that information can be shared widely with our mm -hmm. residents and, and other key stakeholders. Okay, we're just about out of time. Um, I got a, uh, an inquiry from um, the Albany houses. Mm -hmm. It looks like some people are going to be protesting or, or complaining or otherwise upset. They've got photos and stuff like that. We don't have time to go into the details, mm. but it looks like there's a lot of water damage. Mm. There's a lot of, of, of structural damage, you know, walls that haven't been done, mold. Yep. Uh, th that sort of a thing. What what do you say when you when you hear a, a problem? Well, like first that? of all, I'm I'm very interested in knowing what exactly uh, the the particular complaint is. It is important to note that um, we actually are replacing the roofs at Albany houses as we speak. That uh, that pro that development is part of uh, the mayor's uh, commitment of of 100 million dollars in roof replacements at NYCHA. Um, so I w definitely want to figure out what is happening in the par the apartments mm -hmm. that reached out to you. Uh, Albany is particularly uh, close to my heart. That's where my grandmother lived for more than 20 years, so I certainly will want to know and, and perhaps visit myself. Okay, we'll follow up another time. Thank you so much for uh, for coming by. Thank you for the Let's invitation. Let's take a